When I think of Todd Menekes, two words come to mind. True grit. Todd, as I say, always brought that Western background, which again is a great asset to a show jumping rider. Maybe he has a little touch of cowboy to it, but it's very classic. Todd, one of the best time riders you'll ever see. From, you know, the hottest thoroughbred to the heaviest, slowest German horse, he has always been able to figure out sort of what button to push to make that horse be the best it could be. He could get on any horse and make a showing of it. Winning rider Todd Minigus. Most of these horses that Todd has had, he started as young horses. I think I probably have had more success bringing young horses into the Grand Prix level than most anybody else. Oh, star, 10-year-old. Wow. That's he has won more than 140 Grand Prix. And you see the life that Todd has built for himself. It would be easy to think it's always been like that, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I guess like in first grade or something, I wrote a letter about myself or something and said that I was gonna grow up to be a famous jockey, but obviously that didn't work out. I got too big, but once I learned about show jumping, that's something that I've just never been able to outgrow. He was 10 years old and we moved next to a riding stable. And Todd said, I think I would like to get a job there. I said, well, I don't know if you can do that. But the first thing they said to him, say, we could use a little guy like you around here. He got one free lesson a week for watering and feeding 80 horses, so it was a good education for Todd in growing up. Now, thinking back on it, I didn't really, obviously I was a little kid, I didn't realize what good horse people they were at the time. You had to roll up the hose perfectly. You had to leave nothing in the barn aisle way and, and on and on, all those things that make for good horsemanship, good, good clean barn management. And for sure they were gonna instill them in, into you one way or the other. He was at the barn all the time, nonstop. He just had a passion. In, in the most complimentary of ways, Todd has evolved by the seat of his pants. He watches a lot, he rides a lot, he experiments, he goes by gut, feeling, and a really intense desire to win. Well, Todd, Todd comes from very simple roots as a real horse person. Those people that come from simpler roots and really from the ground up, those people go the distance. They go the distance. You know, nothing was handed to Todd. You know, he, he is where he's at today from genuine hard work, not giving up. And he's been blessed with the talent, you know, for sure that it's helped. But I, I think there was sleeping in the cars and trying to figure out situations when you were broken down on the road. I think there was probably lots of those instances that happened for him. But um, I bet if you asked him if he would change anything, I don't know if he'd say he would. I think he'd probably stick right to where he's at. I was able to graduate from high school in January when I was 17 and I had a buddy drive me to a horse show and drop me off and been doing the same thing ever since. I thought he could always, if it doesn't work, he could always come back home and go to college. But he wrote a letter to a friend. I have no intentions of coming home and going to college but I don't know how to tell my mother. How did he tell you? He didn't. I read the letter and I never questioned him. 
Uh, I ended up grooming and cleaning stalls, and I really didn't get a good chance to, to show until I got my $2,500 thoroughbred thrilling. Todd Finnegan riding thrilling. This horse is extremely fast if he can get to the jump up. So if he can somehow get through this horse, he hasn't even wrecked the jump yet. He jumped the triple combination. Clear round and two right leaders in. thrilling and Todd Minicus. I was literally a kid from Iowa and had never been to any of these famous horse shows, never been to the indoor and circuit. He did not have a lot of money when he was young. And, they actually and uh, that horse ended up winning a lot of Grand Prix after I got him off the racetrack. And uh, I qualified to go to the indoors circuit that year and so all the famous European riders were there. I'd seen pictures of most of those people in magazines, but that's as close as it had gotten. And long story short, I won every class at the horse show that I went in. Well, this gorgeous gray called thrilling certainly is at the moment. Coming up, the Budweiser Vertical is the last show. And there we go. This big crowd here. That horse, um, he for sure kind of put me on the map. It's by Todd Minicus on Thrilling. The greatest active rider still competing on the AGA circuit. Coming up In the early 80s, he was very successful and, and a winner. The evolution would be that, you know, because he was such a winner, he was given exposure to better horses, more horses, the ability to compete abroad the ability to go to championships, World Cup finals, things like that. Uh, Todd is on a roll. He won last week a major Grand Prix. He's the one I'm going to pick. People who have done what he's done very often sort of sit back. You know, they've had a few injuries, a few illnesses. They take it a little bit easier, but not Todd. He's out there every day working as hard as he can to provide for his family and to provide for excitement. He has the natural talent. He could get on any horse. And, and make a showing of it, give you a run for your money even around a course like this. I really firmly believe that the horse is the real true athlete or the, the, the main entity of the equation. And, you know, there's always, oh, you have that one horse of a lifetime and that kind of thing. But if you keep your eyes open and pay attention, there's new horses born every day. And, and hopefully they just come down the driveway. Todd Minicus, the mount is O-Star, and this combination has been lethal around the world of show 2001, I had a good horse, um, O-Star, and uh, he was an unbelievable horse, really. And he worked out O-Star with such amazing athletic ability, and look at him, cut right around like a barrel horse around that Budweiser bottle. He was a very refined, very um, stylish, so I think he gave my career the polish, if you will, that maybe it needed. First on course, Todd Menicus riding O-Star. O-Star was, um, to this day, probably the smartest horse I've ever been or worked with. He wasn't scared of anything, and if he was, you'd want to, like, smell it, stomp on it. I have yet to be around on another horse like him. Extremely athletic horse, always has been. And just, as you've said, they've had an incredible, it was just under two months this past summer where you just really couldn't beat these two. I, okay, I've had a lot of success, won a lot of stuff. I don't have a top three finish at a championship. There's not gonna be any competition that, that, is, that is greater than that. It's, it's definitely the, best 30 or 40 horses and the best 30 or 40 riders in the world. It's on the same playing field as the Olympic Games. The kind of riders that win at this level of sport are absolutely elite. They are amongst the best in the world. Welcome on ESPN to this Budweiser World Cup final alongside Lisa Burke. It's a different sense of atmosphere for sure, but O-Star, he lived for every moment of it. Todd Medicus and O-Star. You know, and the more atmosphere was going on around made him just even perform greater. Beautifully done. Yeah, I think he really had a chance to, to win or, or be a top three placing there, and he really was dominating there for, for a while. Oh, Star is a headliner. Taking him to the top right now. The first day I was second place, but really one of the the bummers in my career is that second day where I really made a dumb mistake. Of course, injury. 
So O star earned the nod. The stallion. And then again, the first fence, the offset oxer, as you pointed out, Paul, it is sneaking up on. Definitely think it's a missed opportunity. Uh, I don't think you get those chances that often to really have a legitimate chance at a top three finish in a, in a in what I'm going to say a world championship, and and that's something that. I hope I can get uh, before my riding days are over. Uh, I would think that would feel a little empty if that didn't happen. But like I said earlier, those are those things that are strictly for yourself. I don't think it's gonna make any difference to, to the horses or to my kids or my wife or anybody else that's important. Rock and roll. I think in the past probably seven or eight years, I can't, I can't remember how old Colt is now, but uh, since he's had his two, two kids, I, I believe that it's definitely sort of settled Todd a little bit, as it does us all. Um, I think you, your perspective changes, and, and you know, when you have a bad day in the ring, uh, and you come home to your two great kids and you can play with them, it sort of, it makes it, it makes it so much nicer. So I think the bad isn't so bad anymore and then the good is great because then you also have your kids. Who loves you? I guess like any dad, you think your kids are just the most awesome, you know, no matter what they do. Uh, so I think every day it's, there's something that happens that, that just makes you smile, you know. My mom always said, you won't know what true love is until you have a child, and she couldn't have been more correct. It's just something that I don't even know if I know how to describe. I hope they find something in their life that they're as passionate about as I've been about the horses. Probably, at the end of the day, couldn't have found a better job, so. I mean, if you really said you're gonna get to go all over the world riding horses and, you know, would you really believe it? You know, not really. Yeah, she's...